Welcome to Softcore History. Welcome back to Softcore History. I'm your host for the week, Dan Jester, and I'm joined as always by Jake Goldman. Oh, we're switching back to separate intros now. Mm -hmm. Nice. I like it. I like it. What's up, man? Well, typically Rob also interrupts before I can introduce him, so... Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. So it's good that you gave me the spotlight here because I hear you have a great topic this week. Now, don't set the bar too high. You have a very average topic this week. It's a very just mundane topic. Uh, not a whole lot going on. We're talking. I mean, we're talking about a woman. <laughs> oh no, a woman! Wow, glad to interrupt this banter. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Think of all the stuff that I've <laughs> like not let you guys do over the months and years. Oh, uh, it's cool. You only had like three drinks before the episode, so it's been like five. But yeah, you're not quite there yet, or you've drank enough to go into complete silence. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. For. Yeah. That voice is Rob Fox, of course. Uh, first off, I the only thing I really want is for you to acknowledge. Uh, our victory yesterday. Yeah, that would be great. Actually, you. Well, nobody knows what. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's against true. You're against. Yeah. Well, actually. And that's also, fine. don't spoil no, 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 that. Don't spoil it, the content. We actually have to fucking, cut that. We have to cut oh, that. Fuck, we do. No, I'm not cutting that. All right. And we're not even going to tell you what it's about. But yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's sure. Fine too. We won't talk about it. Yeah. Well. God damn it, Rob. Either way. <laughs> tomorrow, or I guess today, depends when you listen. Um, it's Tuesday, March eighth. It's International Women's Day. Yay. Hooray. Big uh, fan of them. Big fan of women. At, at Mizzou, uh, the sorority house next to us was Kappa Delta. And KD nationally always, like, celebrates uh, International Women's Day. They, mm -hmm. like, typically they do a thing for it. And our chapter, uh, the one next to my fraternity house, um, they would have girls out on the front lawn all day, like being like, honk if you love women, blah, blah, blah. You know, like just like, woo, not in a bad, you know, yeah. I, I mean, blah, 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 in a bad way. It's like, dip, dip, you know, just fun little things, whatever. And uh, the fraternity across the street from us, Phi Cap, would always uh, just get on the lawn and be like assholes and be like, actually, it's International Men's Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, honk if you love dudes or whatever. <laughs> honk if you love dudes. Yeah, that type of shit. Now, Which is funny because there's, they, that house would get, I assume kicked off campus for doing for that sure. Uh, we can always, you know, lean on that fraternity crutch that we always typically go back to. Um, but t today, you two are married. Um, you guys are in loving relationships. Yes, I believe you should go full Deadpool. I think you need to uh, let your woman peg you. Full Deadpool? Mm -hmm. I don't consider like I've never seen Deadpool. So when I think of like pegging, I don't refer to it as a Deadpool. Okay. I just well being de pegged on International Women's Day, I refer to it as a Deadpool. Oh, is it specifically on International mm -hmm. Women's Day well, that the pegging happens? Okay. He has a bit of an advantage because like he can take any size. Well, it was before the accident or the the transition. It was before. Yeah. I don't I know that. what. So can, I, I've never seen Deadpool. So he has I, well, he has healing powers. Oh, so he can just shrink like, it back like Wolverine essentially. Yeah. Okay. Now, but no, brings up a better question. This is before he turns into Deadpool. It's just there's an entire sex scene, um, just kind of montage of different holidays that he has sex with his girlfriend. Oh. And one is International Women's Day, and he, he gets pegged. Have you ever been pegged? Hmm. I have not been pegged yet. Yet. I like, I like the yet. yet. Like That's very progressive. I'll try everything once. Yeah. You know? Here, I'll text my wife real quick to see if she'll do it. Yeah, do that. We haven't done it, but I'll, I will text her, and I'll read her, her uh, answer on air. If she'll peg you or peg me. Uh, <laughs> me, but I guess either. You should just throw out all the options while you're there. Um, man, I always forget my parents listen to this. My parents do too. <laughs> yeah. But my, my oh, mom is currently dad on does. a, a yeah. two-week vacation, so he, she will not be listening to okay. this. Oh, so that's when you're throwing out the so pegging. I'll be huh? as vulgar as possible. <laughs> um, I mean, if it ever came up, I would have a very healthy and open discussion about it. It's just not something that's like floating around on the to-do list for us. What is on the to-do list? I'm not going to tell you what's on our to-do list. I yeah. can tell you what's not on it. And it's pegging? It's pegging. Pegging yeah. hasn't made the list yet. Sure. I, I don't personally. Well, it sounds like it wasn't even thought about or even considered. You know, I'm not going through, like, the Urban Dictionary and be like, huh, let me pull out these things and make sure that Katie doesn't want to do them to Are me. Are you guys right. currently in an edging phase? 
I'm not an edging fan. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, I know you edge a lot. Oh, I, we edge all the time. We? Would yeah. you ever do like a Cincinnati we. soak? My left and right hand. My left hand. <laughs> <laughs> what is a Cincinnati soak? Um, it's a take on Skyline Chili. You just let your, your, uh, your noodle rest in her chili, in her chili hole. Is the chili hole the butt? Or yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just butthole soaking. Ew. A Cincinnati soak. I feel like you could... The sh- butthole surfers? Yeah. Just, but you're not surfing. Hi, Dad. <laughs> yeah, you're just in there. God. Right? You, oh just got your, God. you just got your spaghetti and her chili. Right. The butthole soakers are a much worse cover band. Yeah. <laughs> They're not very good. No. In fact, they stink. P-U. <laughs> <laughs> what woman are you talking about today, Dan? So today we're going to celebrate International Women's Day by uh, celebrating a woman. <laughs> just talking about any random woman. <laughs> this, is Janine, <laughs> this is Janine from the subway next door. <laughs> we're celebrating Actually, you, Janine. There's nothing I would love to learn more than the history of <laughs> those her, people that work at that subway. That's that is a which, crew. Which of one? People. The the entire family, like the entire trailer park family that runs it, from the grandma down to the 16 year old, or the man who works there with full ta- I was face and say, body the tattoos. The guy that is a he is a tattoo. Yeah, that's not. He's not a man with a yeah. lot of tattoos. He's a tattoo with would, a man inside. All of him. I want to learn about is that <laughs> fucking subway, dude. That's like the most polite guy in that. He He's the nicest too. guy in the world. Yeah, I've dealt with like. He the, looks like he's gonna eat your soul. <laughs> yeah, no, niche, I mean totally. Too niche of a reference, guys. No, it doesn't matter. People need to know about the subway crew next door. Yeah, I, I stand by it because the like fifteen year old granddaughter or whatever, mm. she is rude as fuck. Like she was like, oh, "What do you want?" Cool with me. Oh, yeah. Maybe she knows you'd shell out money. I guess so. Yeah. Also, like they, they, a lot of times they give me free stuff too because I'm a regular, which is pathetic. <laughs> you're you're uh, a regular at the. But also, like the two 16 year olds will be outside just like smoking weed next to the door as I'm like leaving or going in there, and I'm just like <laughs> next <laughs> to the door. And it's like, by the way, key. it's like a school day. Like they skip school to work there. Yeah, 100. percent No, that's the retirement plan, dude. That yeah. subway. That subway. I hope they. I hope they're not leasing it. You should never have the phrase "I'm a regular at subway." Just kind of come out of your mouth. Let alone the hard time subway. Oof. <laughs> well, and we have some decent food options here. You just never explore. Like what? Just go down the street. I've <laughs> eaten at La Tunita. I eat at the fucking El Pollo Loco. Now There's it's a Hawaiian niche. food truck yeah. down the street. Yeah, right I'll there. check out the Hawaiian one. But I mean, like, what do you want me to do? I'll go to the Jack in the Box. I've done that. Do I they have it. spam masubi at the Hawaiian but truck? It is Old Torf, so you're taking a risk every time you... Leave this building. That's life or limb, baby. Yeah. yeah. This is Austin's fucking candy land. Yeah, yeah it is. It's so easy. Like, oh, yeah. Hard and the hard streets you grew up in in St. Louis. What hard streets did you grow up in? Delco? Yeah. Delco's a big area. I feel like you claim Delco like I claim St. Louis. No. No. I'm Ridley. Okay. Chester. Okay. It's getting okay. more niche by the second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, hard streets. Okay. I don't Much believe. Much harder than you. Don't and, believe than you. Than your fucking DA parents. University City. And your public defender mom, I believe, or whatever. Yeah, public defenders don't deal with criminals ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, you guys want to get along yeah. so Dan can do his show? So the public no, defenders obviously no, the highest paid no, lawyers uh, in the country. We're, gonna, yes, we're just going to yeah. highly respected. Episode, yeah. Uh, no, today we're going to talk about a woman in a classic female profession, a prostitute. Yeah. yeah. Some say the oldest profession. The oldest. Yeah. yeah easily. In the world. Uh, we are talking today about uh, Chang uh, Sao or Chang Shi, as she was referred to. Um, she was born roughly in 1775 in the Kwantung province, so north shore of the South China Sea, kind of borders where Hong Kong is. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a good pirate country. Yeah. Oh, well, funny you say that. Yeah. Because, yes, this, is, this woman is a rags-to-riches story. A woman that became like started her life as a prostitute and eventually became one of the most renowned pirates to ever sail the sea. I feel like prostitute and pirate, you know, one in the one's same. entry level to the other. Which prostitute's entry level to pirate? Yeah. Yeah. Right? I feel like dirty pirate hooker is something that exists in like the thing, the there like have been things many, things say. Yeah, you there know? have been many hookers who were filthy and whose main clientele were pirates. And then became pirates themselves, possibly. Yeah. They were like, hey, I could just bang you on this boat if you what make if, me a pirate. Dude, what if they were like in uh, Firefly? They had a prosto on the ship. Mm-hmm. Dude, I, I've not seen Firefly, personally. Okay. But 
They have a prosto on the ship, but no one bangs her ever. This sounds like what? It was a real waste of time. It's a Joss Whedon show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, there were plenty of prostitutes on ships. Like that was, we don't have to go to with like a space reference, right? No, that just yeah, that was real life. I just feel like she's the most famous ship prostitute <laughs> that our listeners would know. Unless was there a pros, was there a ship prostitute in like black? Was it Black Sails? Is that the show? Oh, the, the pirate star show? show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was there? I don't know. Probably. I don't know. There was I like seven I, episodes of that show. So. <laughs> you canceled that quick? It's like, no. It was good. It was just nobody watched it because it was on stars. Nothing. Yeah. The, I feel like the only star show that's ever gone far is like the Rome, Blood and Sand or whatever the hell it was. Spartacus. Called. Yeah. That was Netflix. That show was no, terrible. That's, Wasn't it? No, the, the stars. The one. Well, Spartacus, Blood and Sand and stars. Yeah. Netflix, yeah. And that guy died, right? Yeah. The Spartacus guy died within the first season f- yeah. from cancer. I think so. Something weird like that. He didn't survive like Michael C. Hall. No. Or Spartacus. Yeah. Spartacus made it a little longer than fake Spartacus did. Makes you think. It does. Not a method actor. No. No. Well, if he was he a died. method actor, he would have died of crucifixion. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Which he refused to do. <laughs> like a coward. So come on, man. Buy in. Yeah. Now, not much is known about her childhood uh, as she grew up from poor parents, uh, but we can wildly no, speculate. No one was writing things down for her. <laughs> yeah. We can Get wildly this. speculate that, uh, you know, her mom died during childbirth. Uh, her old man probably had an opium addiction. Wow. That's a, you're just assuming he had an opium addiction. Well, it was 1775 in uh, a, a poor area of China. So, yes. Had they gotten hooked on opium yet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Opium kind of came in. Earlier than you think. Okay. Oh well, yeah. I guess it would have because the Dutch uh, was it the Dutch West, East Indies or East Indian East Indi- West yeah. East India Indies is the company. Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'm thinking of Dutch West Indies, the East India Trading Company or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you've the, done an episode on it. Yeah. I know. Yeah. They're, it's they're hard to retain all this information. Yeah, no, they're they're entrenched. Yeah, and that's before there. the 1700s. Yes. Yeah. The East India Company is uh, uh, the bald guy from the town. Who just gets chicks hooked on heroin? The florist. Yeah, the florist. He's the oh, florist, yeah. right? And China, that's Ben Affleck's mom. He's like, I got her, got my hooks in her. Yeah. I'm gonna clip her petals. Yeah, yeah. God, that guy's creepy. There's people like that. It's He's terrifying. Great. Yeah. great actor, Pete Possible, something like that. Great actor. He's dead. Also <laughs> cancer. <laughs> cool. All right, We're gonna connect man. as many dots to cancer <laughs> as we can for this. You can episode. connect a lot of dots to cancer. Yeah. Everyone, six degrees from your uncle dying. That's why it's okay. Dude, it's like it's two okay. for everybody. It, yeah, it's okay. That's why everyone can make cancer jokes. I don't think you're... Not. Everyone's lost a loved one to cancer. Sure, yes. So it's anyone that's like, you can't make a... That's key. weird. That's so out of end. <laughs> We're talking about taking advantage of a horrible thing. Everyone's, everyone's lost a loved one to cancer. That's why we can make fun of it. Kinda. But yeah, it's true. Then why not? But it sounds, you get what I'm saying, right? It sounds very opportunistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, it, way less people lost a loved one in 9 11, and we're still allowed to make fun of that. Enough time has passed. That's true. Yeah. Dunk on 9 11. Always. Right? Always. Yeah, no. I mean, what's funnier than that? It's pretty funny. I mean, it's not, but. It's pretty funny. I'm sure the joke's play in college right now because no, those kids jokes. were not. They weren't. Oh, dude, they didn't even experience it. it. Yeah, that's like when we were growing up. It was funny to make like non PTSD jokes. Pearl Harbor. Oh jokes. my god, dude. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think about that. Non PTSD jokes were fucking hilarious. Yeah, uh, a lot of like, there's Charlie in the trees. Yeah. Shit, you know, like yeah, the trees are speaking Vietnamese. <laughs> yeah, no, that shit happened on the playground. Like, I yeah. don't care what anyone says. That's shit dude, kids the, would say. Well, I love yeah. you. There's Charlie's in the trees. Mm-hmm. It's hilarious. It's not funny, but kids said it because kids say weird shit. Yeah, and you grew up with palm trees, so you could really play nom pretty well. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were. We loved going out <laughs> and playing nom in fucking fifth grade in Ocala, Florida. <laughs> Let me tell you what. And if it got too cold in the winter, those iguanas just start bon- like. Yeah. We didn't have iguanas. Dude. That's a South Florida from- thing. That's wild, though. That's it's yeah, crazy. But they they down there. freeze and they they drop off the trees. <laughs> like they don't, get- they're not dead. No, but they will do Yeah, they you. drop. Yeah, yeah they, they, they die on impacts. <laughs> <laughs> they die the, when they fall out. That's yeah. yeah. They're not dead when they fall. Just just when they splat. Dude, what if you just waited under a tree for iguanas with like a baseball bat and the game <laughs> was you just try to like hit them <laughs> like as a, like falling. a moving pinata yeah, tart. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Just oh, what's in your iguana? Bones and blood, like always, no candy. <laughs> <laughs> or reverse of that, lacrosse stick, so then you catch them and launch them. That's all too, in one motion. Okay. What if you catch them and you're a humanitarian, you like throw them back up? 
<laughs> just toss them back in the <laughs> yeah, tree so they can fall out. Yeah. Or you just save them to like get your uh, football out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so what we actually know about her from the jump is uh, kind of the story picks up when she is a prostitute uh, in her teens. Um, she's on a floating brothel boat. Uh, these were known as flower boats. Uh, in the Cantonese port city, these boats would sail along the nearby coast with customers on board. Uh, this is when... Why? Why on, why on boats? Was there some sort of odd legal reason for that? No. Like in, um, uh, so, no. So this is a Chinese perceived um, sexual pleasure of rocking the boat added an entirely different d- dimension. So people like to have sex on boats. Okay, so they could soak and let the motion of the ocean. And it's always soaking with you. It is. Yeah. Also, the clientele, I feel like especially when you're, you're dealing with pirates, it's just easier Yeah. go boat to boat. Well, I didn't know if it was like, you know, uh, riverboat gambling, right? <laughs> right, you got to get a certain degree out of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and then it's like oh it's international waters or like it's gamble. federal water yeah. so you can't i remember there was a thing in st louis i learned about in history a million years ago uh where like black kids during um segregation they weren't allowed to like be educated certain ways or whatever uh i think this is even like early early like maybe like right after the civil war but so that was like a state law or like a city law or both a sure. probably a state law so Philanthropists would take them on riverboats because Mississippi's a federal waterway. Okay. Where there were not laws prohibiting black kids from learning how to like fucking read or something. Yeah. So that was how they would like get around that. I didn't know if there was a uh, weird Chinese. I mean, you think they're all too addicted to opium to care about where, who's prostowing where, but. Oh, and you'll find out the fucking Chinese government back then too was uh, kind of weak as hell. <laughs> yeah, they were gutted. I mean, this is like the heart of colonialism for China, right? Like they're just gutted at this point. And this is why she can rise to power. All right. Love it. And we'll get to that. Um, So on this float in Pleasure Palace, she was one of the most sought after, I guess, attractions. Is that the right word? It's not the wrong word. Yeah. It's not the wrong word. Uh, For the combination of her beauty, charisma, charm, and intellect. Can't imagine. uh, How old was she? At this point, um, so she was born roughly 1775. This is kind of in her teenage years. So Yeah. Gonna guess the age played a part in that too. Young. I feel yeah. like it does with uh, sex tourism in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Taylor's oldest time. Yeah. But kind of the, the meat of this story is when she's roughly around like 26, between 26 and 30. Okay. So, you know, she, she does quite a bit of time on this boat, these flower boats. Okay. Just picking up clientele, picking up little nuggets of information too. She's really savvy. So okay. she's kind of using the she's kind of honeypotting people without even knowing it in a way like she's getting a lot of intel without anyone yeah. being the wiser that she's gonna like use it to catapult herself she's getting pumped for information yeah she's getting <laughs> she's getting pumped by like politicians yeah. by pirate like she has her finger on the wait, pulse wait a minute i'm sorry criminals and politicians having sex with underage girls for you know forever yeah <laughs> what crazy that's a tale as old as time. Yeah. Not even just the sex hey, tourism part, but like, yeah. Sad. Yeah. She's like, I can't, uh, I got to go on the boat and fuck a 14-year-old Yeah, today. people in power just running out of things to exploit, so they start going down the ladder of, like, worse and worse and worse until they get to underage people. I don't even, this is probably pretty normal even. Actually, I was, as I was saying that, I was like, well, this is 1700. Right. There's, like, probably a blurry area with what's underage at the time. But yeah, like, for sure. Uh, still, I mean. Yeah. So she developed herself quite the reputation on this one flower boat uh, to the point where a, mercenary, a Vietnamese mercenary uh, who was in charge of their kind of Navy pi- privateer group, uh, Chang Yi, was so captivated by her that he decided to court her for several weeks. And by that, I mean he kidnapped her off the boat and held her hostage on his ship until she developed Stockholm Syndrome and accepted his marriage proposal. Aww. That's just courting. Yeah. yeah. It's the 1790s, 80s. I can show you this shit. Yeah. <laughs> One specific small room. <laughs> yeah, it's that song, but <laughs> she's not allowed to leave the carpet. <laughs> Don't get off the magic carpet. <laughs> yeah. So she eventually caves and becomes Chang Yi Sao, which means wife of Chang. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but under the condition she would be an active participant in the pirate life. She wanted 50%. 
Okay. She wanted the full experience. She's so like, she's I'm good. not going to sit on the sidelines. I want to be in the midst of this. I want to have some say. I want us to be able to strategize. And because uh, Chang Yi, he, like, his goal was to unify the Southern Chinese pirates as one Navy. And she fucked with that vision. She yeah, I mean, that's ambitious. She sees the ambition. She's like, all right. No, he's- she fucked with it. She fucked with it? Like, she fucked it up? No, she... Oh, she was, she was down she, with she it. Was, she fucks okay. with it. She can you know? ride. Okay, okay. Yeah, or she, die. But she will ride. Sick. Well, she'll probably die, too. She sees the ambition. Yeah, because she's dead. She wants to be an addition. Nice. We don't know if she's dead yet. It'd be rad if she wasn't. She's still alive. She's <laughs> immortal. Yeah, that would be really cool for her. I will say, though, typically, when you, you sign up for the pirate life, it doesn't usually end... Yeah, it's not long. It's usually in, in a box. Yeah. I no, mean, whatever, it's not usually in a I box. I was about to say, whatever the boat equivalent of a box is. The just ocean? Tossed, tossed yeah, just over the side. Thrown overboard. Bloated and floating. Uh, so they get married. Um, they also uh, dorm one of the raids when they they take an adopted son under their wing, uh, Cheng Pao. Now, totally normal that he ransacked Cheng Pao's fishing village and forced uh, him to be his protege. Uh, but the kid eventually ended up being in this weird love triangle with his two adopted parents, mm-hmm. having mm-hmm. sexual relationships with both. Wait, 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 wait. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this mm-hmm. kid, they they pillage his village, yep. steal him from his parents, yep. probably massacre his actual parents. Mentor him. And then mentor him. And then both of them, uh, both of them have sex with this kid. Uh, Chang Yi and Chang Yi Sao, yes. Both, both the, the, the madame and the husband we're fucking this 15 year old kid that they took under their wing. Yikes. Cool. But also, also raising him up to be a gen- <laughs> like a, a naval. <laughs> well, let's sure. not, let's naval. Yeah. Uh, nautical. Maybe a captain, you know? Yeah, sure. I guess. <laughs> yeah. So just to, just wanted to be clear. They're completely and yeah. wholly corrupting this person. It's like, so, so the on detail, the one hand, at they, first it doesn't seem super important, but uh, this okay. detail comes into play later on. So uh, w- on the one hand, they murdered his parents uh, and stole him from his home. But on the other hand, uh, they're raping him. <laughs> it's a real little menage a trois. But yeah. he gets to learn how to use a boat. So... <laughs> Who can say? I mean, I. you remember when you were 10 and you yeah. were like, man, I wish people would come and kill and rape yeah. my family no, and like, then take me and then rape me. And then they teach me how to cruise a boat. Yeah, for sure. Like I, I, yeah, I was like knees on the bedroom floor. Just like, come on, please. God. Like when I was a little kid. Where I, is my captors? I wanted to be a garbage man when I was a little kid. And who's to say how I would have reacted if the garbage men <laughs> broke into my house, murdered my parents. And, That's uh, a life Took me <laughs> aboard their garbage truck. <laughs> right. Regularly a, raped me. A, and But taught me how to drive the garbage truck. It's a wildly <laughs> different Disney movie if Tony Danza does that. Yeah. And doesn't become a field goal kicker for the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yes, in July of 1802, the Tay Song dynasty in Vietnam falls and Chang Yi and a bunch of mercenary privateers that worked for them were now out of a job. Uh, so without direction or leadership for a large group of pirates who now had zero source of income. Just sounds like a life of a contractor. Yep. Chang Yi and the madame put together a plan to unite and take over the large group of newly unemployed. And it started with getting the trust of friends and subordinates into leadership roles. Uh, so through the signing of the agreement on July 1805, in which each pirate leader agreed to sacrifice some of their autonomy for the greater good, they successfully put together a conglomerate of six different gangs flying under red, black, white, green, blue, and yellow flags. Great time to do this, by the way. In terms of world history, 1805? 1805. I believe that's the same year as the Battle of Trafalgar. Uh, it's the height of the Napoleonic Wars. All the major navies that were too busy uh, raping China, like these Chinese pirates were raping a Vietnamese boy. Um, they were busy. They were busy doing other stuff. The oceans were even freer than usual. They were. So under this entire group, they had over 300 ships and 40,000 men. God, uh, that's damn. a fucking lot, dude. That's an armada. <laughs> yeah. For their own specific fleet, which was the Red Fleet. Oh, my God. And then total, they had 400 ships and 70,000 men. That's fucking bananas, dude. 
For reference, Blackbeard commanded only four ships and 300 pirates. So this was not just this little... It was a fucking navy. They had a navy. Yeah. That's a... That's it was a, bigger than most countries. At the time? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they wrecked havoc in the South China Sea, and business was a booming. However, in 1807, Chang'e was tragically swept overboard during a tsunami and died at the age of 42. Was that the Vietnamese boy or the husband? This is the husband. Okay. I know. The, yeah. the names are similar. It's like last week with the Italians. The yeah. names are kind of similar. And, I mean, her name is completely based off who she He's, married. Right. That's why I'm like. After the fact. Like, she's a nameless woman. Right. Until she gets married. Until yeah. she gets married. So their names are, like, literally, her name is his name's wife. So, so the, she goes from Chang Yi Sal to Jan, uh, Chang Shi, which means widow. The widow. Oh, of Chang. Okay. So Chang Shi, got it. Okay. How many ships did you say their overall fleet had? Four hundred. Oh, four hundred. Four hundred. So it was about. 70. It was about half the size of the British Navy at that time, which Jeez. was the most powerful navy in the world. That's insane. Yeah. The British Navy had about nine hundred ish ships. So at the time, China has no fucking answer for that. No. I have an answer for anything. No. No. <laughs> These people are just doing what they want. Yes. Uh, so, as the widow now, Chang Shi, uh, made all the correct chess moves, gaining support of the most powerful leaders of the fleets when her husband dies, including naming her adopted son slash lover, Chang Pao, the new leader of the largest fleet, which was the Red Fleet, entering into a monogamous relationship with her adopted son through marriage. I mean, that's smart on her part. That is actually the, I mean, as fucked up as the way she got that son in there, she was grooming him because she knew that dude. I mean, is there speculation that she killed her first husband? There has no, to be. No, he gets, I, I, I didn't see any of that in the research. It just sounded like it was a bad storm and he just got fucking swept away. Okay. Well then if that's the case still, she was like, she's like, I got to buy backups so people don't just try to kill me and right. take ownership. Like yeah. I got to establish this. So from a foresight perspective, I would say she's pretty damn smart. And also she just did to him what that guy did to her. Pretty much. Take a hostage, make him your, make him your, uh, fuck your, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the fleet became incredibly more active under her control. She established a code of conduct for her men to follow and keep everything in check. Uh, here are some of the rules she put together in place. Can't wait for these. Uh, rule one, disobeying chain of command will lead to decapitation. No questions asked. Well, that's the only rule you need. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> rule number two, every raid had to be approved by uh, Chang Shi. Oh, my God. Red uh, tape. So micromanage much? Yeah. Uh, so all, serious. You all, gotta file a form and duplicate to get a raid going. How pirate? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I, thought we were, I thought this was pirates. I thought we were pirates. No, now we're in navy. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, uh, my wife said she would not be down with pegging. Oh, for me or you? Uh, I, I imagine that's either. General. Yeah. Okay. I guess I can ask okay. if she'll if she'd prefer your crone's hole. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, so all seized goods also had to be presented for inspection. If any pirate was found hiding or underreporting goods, a part of their body was chopped off. I'm sorry, so she's the IRS now? <laughs> yeah. More or less, yeah. She's got, like, the she's big government thing. Skeet. She's good. A, she's a bookkeeper. Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, I'm just, I, honestly, this sounds like uh, as much as we want to be like, oh, you're the IRS, whatever. Bureaucracy works. It's... So far. Right. Yeah. What do they say uh, in, this, in reference to the Russian war, but this is like a military thing in general. Uh, amateurs study tactics. Professionals study logistics. All right. You need that bureaucracy if you want to succeed. You got to know how to get things done in, yeah. in a not ideal situation. Right. right? I mean, that's, I, I, that's goes back to Machiavelli. It's like, okay, sure. Yeah. This is what you believe. Who yeah. fucking cares? What's going to make it happen? How does your vision get done? Is it right. by appealing to people's ideals? No. It's by making sure things happen the way you want them to and using realistic expectations of other people to yeah. do so. Sounds yeah, like and she was pretty well-rounded uh, just with A, the logistics, B, keeping her ear to the ground, knowing what's going to happen. Well, she's clearly good at getting intel. Like, she's great, been doing it great forever. Great at intel. She's, uh, it's kind of what she learned. Like, everything that she learned as a pot or I guess what that she implemented as a pirate. I feel like she learned at the brothels, right? No. Cause I mean, you said she was like with politicians and high ranking people mm -hmm. uh, like that. That makes sense. She probably got a lot of good. Uh, actually, interestingly enough, there's like a lot of good studies on when they were doing the MK ultra shit, like post nut 
people talk. <laughs> people talk a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Post nut. So Post-nut. chatty. So. Especially if they think they're talking to someone like worthless. Right. Like a 15 year old prostitute on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Well, there's an ego boost if they stick around to listen. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, I'm not just a John. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I only let hookers do my taxes. <laughs> yeah. They're just good with numbers. Most independent contractors are probably great at taxes. You got to think, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like I got to know what my keep is. They've been 1099 for years. Yeah. They know. Are you good at taxes, Dan? Um, this is only my second year as a 1099, so uh, we'll f- we'll see. Mm. We'll see what I can write off. What yeah. I can. everything. I'm trying. I'm not great at taxes. Mm. Again, I'm bad at receipts. Yeah, I'm actually. I got to file here in the next eight days for. I'm going to so. definitely file for an extension. Getting done soon. That's going to happen. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Might be, uh, might rule number problems. three that they followed: uh, women captured during raid shall suffer no harm, especially if they were attractive. Uh, now, what? It's because they were simply too valuable to be violated and needed to be sold into prostitution. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's an income play. I yeah. get it. Yeah. She wasn't looking out for her fellow woman. Don't hurt the slaves, right? <laughs> right. Don't, don't bruise the banana. Well, it's like you got to at least you got to have something that's generating passive income for you, right? Right. Yeah. So, like, don't, I don't know. And also, what does harm mean? Uh, you weren't allowed to rape them. Oh, okay. I didn't know if it meant like, hey, don't smack them around. Don't kill them. If you did, though, uh, guess what your options were? Wiener what? cut off. You get your head cut off. Or your dick and balls. You take that woman as your wife. Oh. oh. Okay. Well, I probably... It's kind of biblical. What if you just hated the chick that much? Like, you were just really drunk the night before, and she was pretty gross, and you were just like, ugh, just decapitate me. Just kill me just fucking kill me this i got sounds no better way. than a life with this woman yeah yeah which i feel like once she is your wife they don't no one cares what happens to her well that's where you're wrong she okay. said as if you mess with the goods here you gotta you are now financially liable for this woman for the rest of your life okay uh, you cannot cheat on her or else again head cut off wow yeah She's uh, really breaking up the boys club that is the pirate life. Honestly, being a pirate under her sounds like it sucks. <laughs> what do you yeah, even do? She kept them in line. I and guess. I thought that. the whole point of being a pirate right. was to not be in line with anything like, except for your limbs. Like, oh, good rules. <laughs> Finally. Thank this place God. really needed some order. Yeah, I'm t- I was tired of the unstructured life that I purposely sought out. Yeah. You know, this whole being a criminal and evading any sort of societal norms really you was know, just getting to me. It even proves that Pirates need a little stability in their life. I guess. Everyone does. Or else you die. Structure. They're like, everyone's like a, like a little baby. They yeah. all need structure in their right. lives. You know what happens when you have no structure in your life? You die from eating some berries in a bus in Alaska. You get into it's the true. wilded. Yeah. That's right. That's fair. Christopher McCann's right. I think that's his name. I don't know. But yeah. He died like an idiot. What's crazier is more people died trying to see that bus every fucking winter. So, yeah, it's just a constant it's revolving just dumb cycle. Asses. Yeah. To be fair, if you try to make that pilgrimage, you deserve to die on it. Well, the funny, the best, not funny, but like the best part is these people didn't learn any lesson from his life story. It's no, like they funny. go at the same time that he died. Yeah. And it's like they know where the bus is, yeah, that's but it's, funny. it's extremely dangerous to get there during the winter. It's funny. They had to move the bus. Yeah. That's how many people died. Yeah, no, that's funny. It's kind of funny. Well, they're stupid. Yeah, it's like, did you, did you, you clearly didn't get the point of this. Where's the tragedy there, really? That's like the same thing as people that are like, oh man, like, uh, fucking, that missed the point of like Fight Club or Wolf of Wall Street. Right. It's like, you missed the point of Into the Wild somehow? Yeah. Where, like, you're idolizing this? This guy died with so much potential. Yeah, he's a a fucking idiot. Like, where, where's the tragedy? There's tragedy to like someone getting hooked on drugs that they can't get off of and, and ODing. Yeah. I, I, but like, These people made a choice that they could unmake at any moment. They're like, man, it's getting pretty rough in here. Might as well turn around. Don't want to end up like the guy we're trying to see where he died. Yeah. 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 Like an addict can't unmake a choice at a certain point. These these people could. Yeah. You're not addicted to going and seeing a bus. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care about them. Now, another rule she had um, was actually a pretty valuable rule. Uh, Don't harm the villages that you pillage. Hmm. How did anything get done? 
first pirate off, pirate wise. So by like, pillaging I, them, you are harming them. No, so her, she would rather you go up, kind of make threats, rob them, but then kind of ha- keep them under your wing and keep them under your control. Uh, but like, give them a you know, no, don't physically hurt them. Just so, economically, yeah. Don't yeah. don't physically hurt the buildings. Like, try, try, at all cost, avoid. Uh, I guess conflict. I guess because you'd rather instead of raiding them once, it's like a paying the mafia protection. I was just thinking well, it's more of a racketeering that. thing. Right, than right, right. That's yeah. kind of she was both a pirate and a mafia member. It seems yeah, seems more mafia than pirate. So because mafia, there's like a million rules. There's a whole structure to it, right? It sounds like she's trying to establish that. Yeah, like she's maybe trying to turn it to. And you could argue the mafia maybe stole many of her models. I mean, you could definitely probably it's. I'm trying to think of who it would be in that I, area. It wouldn't because be because she was trying Cosa to right. So like any area she took over, she would kind of keep that area by establishing like having allies. You want to get some good intelligence from those people. You would treat them properly and well, so Loyalty. that they could yeah r- come back to you. It's it's kind of like a, what's better than you know you don't what is it called? You don't salt the fields or whatever. Yeah, you don't, treat those yeah, you, you rule with honey rather than vinegar. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Also, it's worth noting that there's just, like, no any sort of, like, useful, effective uh, governing entity right. to protect. Well, yeah, a, de- a destabilized and non-central government. Right. Like, is, that's perfect for that. It's ripe for being able to pick off And like, honestly, small if pieces. I was a town and, you know, well, there's only, like, ten dudes there and... They're all me or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're gonna ask the pirates to to be protection. It's like, hey, listen, thanks for not burning down my house. Yeah. Most of the other ones do. Yeah. If you could, you know, we'll give you a cut. We'll give you. 30% Let's make this a our... lot easier where I'm not dead and I don't have to rebuild my house every three months. How about that? Right. Yeah. No, it makes sense. It's actually a really smart play by her. Just like racketeering makes sense. Protection. It's like, hey, we're protecting you from what? From us. Yeah. She but actually other... might have been protecting them from other things though as no, I mean, well. sure yeah at, at a certain point the mafia is protecting you from other gangs right too it's like hey you know you're, it's gonna suck paying us but if anybody tries to fuck with you that's not us we're going to murder them yeah right the, the kicked puppy just coming back to you yeah, yeah exactly because you didn't murder the puppy i mean it's still very wrong but i'm saying it it's not nonsensical mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh these pirates were also during a time where it was very religious. Uh, so Cheng Shi took advantage of this. Uh, she had a temple built on one of the ships, and she'd give the priest a heads up of like her intentions before battle. Uh, so he would give a little show and dance to the crew about how God's plan was always conveniently lined up with hers. What religion? Um, cr- Christianity. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I think. I would have thought like, uh, was it Taoism? I or don't even Buddhism. Know. I was going to say, well, Shinto is Japanese. Shin- right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So no, Shinto is like Taoism or Buddhism. Some, some sort of thought. Buddhism yeah. or something like that. Um, I actually didn't dig into it, so it could have been any of those three. I imagine things. it's not Christianity. But either way, I mean, it's it It doesn't matter what the religion is. It's the what it's facilitating, right? Mm-hmm. It's like we're not only doing this for her. It's for a higher power. And she seems pretty tapped into that. So that you're giving off a fate vibe, right? It's a lot easier to buy, get people. Like how many wars have been started over a uh, Religious backing, right? All of them? Yeah. Actually, the invasion of Ukraine. Even As a, a relig- little bit of a religious aspect to it. No, no, no. Uh, Putin kind of uses uh, the Eastern Orthodox Church as like a justification it's a, it's the, situation. It's the hand that rattles the saber. Something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's like, he's really into like using that as like. Uh, well, yeah, he's a, he's a religious national socialist. He's a czarist. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. What's up, Dan? What are you looking at? Uh, Well, according to a quick Google search, the main religion in China in the 19th century was Protestantism. All right. Cool. Nice. Look at them. Well, she's doing it for Jesus. I'm down with it. I mean, I'm not... Obviously, Protestants don't go to heaven and don't worship the right Jesus, but I guess it's better than nothing. But again, like, we we think of these... This wasn't that long ago, so obviously you have East India Company coming in and wrecking havoc with the opium. Yeah. You have a bunch of, like, missionaries that are probably hitting up China. Mm Mm-hmm. Coming along with that. So, yeah, I think, like, yeah, the God. power of Christ. Could you yeah. imagine? Compelled her. Compelled her. Well, not her, but, like, these, right. some of these. Early 19th sailors. century, you're just some guy. You're some bloke. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to bring Jesus to 
fucking they were in China. It. Yeah, yeah. They, they tried. That's them. way more dangerous than doing mission work now. That's just like a vacation for kids now. Yeah. Now it's like, hey, we're gonna go into this opium pumped country. Well, except for that one idiot who went to the Sentinel Island. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was dumb. He deserved everything that yes, happened. Yes, I him. feel even less bad for him than I do I for feel the bus people. No one should feel bad for him. His family shouldn't feel bad for no. him. No. That's that is. Jesus doesn't feel bad for him. <laughs> like I'm gonna put that. Did out you ever there. read what happened to him? It's he went one time and almost died. Then he went back or yeah, something like that. And like he was walk. I don't know how they know this, but he was walking towards them with the Bible in the air and the Islanders. These people, by the way, have not been ever. They've never had contact. With they attack the world. anyone coming yeah. up to him because they want to stay by themselves. Yeah, I mean they, they live like some borderline prehistoric life. Like it's crazy. But he was just walking towards him with the Bible, and they kept yelling at him like, "Go away! We're gonna kill you!" Not in English, obviously, but like they were very clear. They probably were holding spears, like, and "We're gonna arrow- throw these, motherfucker!" Yeah. And then yeah. he was just riddled with arrows. Yeah, because he went one time before, and they attacked his helicopter or some shit. It's, yeah, yeah, it's. It's worth reading about. If so you that's to. he wanted to be a martyr. Yeah, I think yeah. he did too. Chang Shi had the awareness that loot alone wouldn't be enough to keep her seventy thousand hardened men at sea happy, so she went after uh, legitimate shipping operations in the salt trade and South China Seas and put together a protection for pay play. So yeah, mafia, like, mafia, yeah. yeah. And it's even opening up the door to once you kind of once you have those legitimate avenues like waste management, salt right. trade, you can kind of work your way into almost being more legit than you are not Yeah, yeah and yeah. having enough cover and then getting out. Yeah. Get an easier way out. It yeah. is funny to me that the mafia and, and the pirates or whatever, like with the mafia, it's like, Hey, you know, I 95, that's our interstate. It's like, no, it's the federal government's interstate. You don't own any at all. You don't do any, uh, you no, know, no, you don't, you don't fix it. You don't, it's, it's you're there. not maintaining that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're not this, doing fuck all. It's like, this is, uh, this is our ocean. It's like, no, that's earth. Yeah. That's earth. You don't, you don't have any claim to it really. Is it yours? Cause you keep throwing bodies in it and yeah. shitting in it. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, yes. The highway is funnier though. Yeah. Like, it was our highway. I was like, what? No, in no way. Yeah. It'd be, if they were the guys that did the road cruise and it was private, God. Then yeah, maybe. They yeah. probably did. Can you imagine? Um, that's kind of an argument against privatization, isn't it, though? Yeah. Can you imagine, like, if a criminal organization that had a very legitimate front became a privatized, like, maintenance of the roads thing? They could fucking snipe out anyone doing crime on that that wasn't them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe they'd stop some stuff, but then they'd just do their own stuff. It's like, oh, man, I didn't think about driving heroin up this thing. Yeah. That's a great idea. You're dead. Here's our heroin. Yeah. Let's go take it. We'll yeah. drive it. Yeah. Uh, during this time, the Chinese Imperial Navy was uh, decimated, uh, and she controlled all the shipping routes by simply deciding to. That's good. That's I a lot of power. At this point, it's the 1800s, mm-hmm. early 1800s. What what fucking Chinese Imperial Navy was there even? Not much. Yeah. Like, I mean, they, they had been decimated for a hundred years probably. But yeah, if you wanted to continue operating in the world trade in the South China Sea, you had to go pay Chang Shi, her tax. Cool. Yeah. So the Red Flag Fleet was operating its business at an enormous scale. Uh, that was like the main fleet of. Yeah, that was like hers. the one that, that was, was like hers. Forty thousand out of seven. And, and Cheng Pao, yeah. her her adopted son husband. husband. <laughs> By the way, was the she pulled a real Woody Allen on that kid? <laughs> she did. <laughs> was the East India Trading Company and shit? Were they paying her as well? So we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not a single ship moved in the South China Sea without the knowledge of Chang Shi's army. Entire coastal towns worked for them, supplied them with food, goods, and other provisions. Ships that wanted to cross the South China Sea were taxed by the pirates. If they refused, they were attacked and plundered immediately. Um, obviously, they had a bigger fucking navy than most. Um, she would set up financial offices in each coastal town, especially on the Pearl River, that would have agents who would collect cash in exchange for safe voyage documentation. So you pay them and you get like a little... like a Get like, out of being pu- pillaged free card? Yes. <laughs> That's kind of smart. You get, you, get, you get like your fucking uh, passport stamped. Yeah. Every it's like, time. Don't fuck with this guy. He paid us already. And I'm sure that didn't hold up all the time. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it did to an extent to make it a legitimate product. Otherwise, no one would pay for it. Fair. It's, it's pre-pirating. It's like you're prepaying your plunder, right? It's like, okay, it's instead road. of you jumping on our shit. It's loading up your yeah. toll card. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's, okay. I have Texas a certain. tag. Yeah. yeah. Tax tag. <laughs> yeah. Texas tag. I have a certain amount of being stolen money a month, and I just yeah. go ahead and pay it up front. It's your ocean tax. Yeah. 
God, right. is that it's what taxes than the are? Alternative, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Or else the federal government come in and fuck you up. Yeah, it's like, do you want to pay us this now, or do you want to pay a ton of money in legal fees yeah. and pay more? What if the What if the IRS was just like, you could pay us, or you can do jail for like two months every year? Every year? Yeah, not worth it. Not worth it every every year. five years? Maybe yeah. <laughs> might not be. Well, one out of every five years, you go to jail. No, that's more time. You just get to work out and have sex for a year. <laughs> the way you you're really yada yadaing have sex. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really pretty way to paint that picture, Rob. So the red flag fleet under uh, Chang Shi's rule went undefeated in these waters, despite multiple attempts of the Chinese uh, government officials trying to vanquish it. There are stories of admirals in the Chinese government sabotaging their own ships to avoid having to go out of port and fight Chang Shi's navy. That doesn't surprise me. Like, again, the Chinese situation at this point is fucking gutted. Gutted. Like, the West has butt-fucked China. Well, especially after uh, the government sent Mandarin Navy vessels to confront the Red Flag fleet. Uh, just a few hours into the battle, the Mandarin Navy was uh, facing defeat. Um, Cheng, she used this opportunity within hours to just take everybody that was a part of the Mandarin Navy under her wing. She's like, you, we'll stop killing you if you just join us. Right. Oh. And they were like, yeah, chill. So every ship that the Chinese government kept sending out, she just absorbed. Yeah. It was all quarter with her. Yeah. yeah. It's like in, uh, in uh, Age of Empires or Age of uh, Kings or Age of Empires 2 or whatever. Where the you know you attack you're getting attacked by a navy and you just send your priests up and you convert them. Did that work for you? Yeah, you can convert boats. We all, I always thought that was funny. You just convert boats with your priest. Now the real problem started not with the Chinese government, it started with Portugal, the United States, and the East India Company starting to sniff around. USA trying to get the cut. USA. Uh, it wasn't really the U.S. or East India Company that was the real problem. It's the Portuguese. Portuguese. The Portuguese people forget. They had a moment. Yeah. They had, uh, there was a moment. It was brief, but they had better ships than everyone else yeah. on the planet. They had a moment. They colonized Brazil. Fucking Brazil. I believe they were pretty big into Africa and South Africa in particular. Uh, Dude, the Portuguese were a really, uh, they're a colonial power, imperialist powerhouse for a minute. Yeah, it's weird seeing like South America and just like them in Spain were like, all right, we're going to split this thing up, right? Yeah. And, and like uh, Portugal's like, instead of just doing a straight line down, they're like, we're going to just do this. Yeah, <laughs> like just that all one. of Brazil. Yeah. But then you get Chile, which is just like, <laughs> like just yeah. a long strip for Spain on the West Coast. It is a little, like, there is no reason, there's, it is not reasonable at all. That a country as humongous as Brazil speaks a language of a country as tiny as Portugal. That's that's called influence, dude. Yeah. <laughs> At that time, especially. Yeah. Especially because they had such a tiny window. Like England, it, the UK, whatever, Britain. Yeah. Influential for centuries. Portugal, no. Flash in the pan. Real flash in the pan. But they got a lot from it. They There's, did. Portugal is the Terrell Davis of countries. That's a great way to put it. Just like three really like all time years, yeah, and then just nothing again. Yep, can't take those ships away though. I mean, he won two Super Bowls. I'd love yeah. to visit Portugal, by the way. That's like in the top like five country list. Portugal's for me. awesome. It's like all drugs decriminalized. Yeah, it's like chill. I just want to do heroin with my kid in the other room <laughs> and not feel like a jerk about it. Yeah, I'm not breaking the law. What about your kid <laughs> in the room? Well, I guess it depends on what the hotel we can afford. That's fair. We'll be doing a. We'll be at a hotel where we can do heroin, so it won't be a very good hotel. I, like, so we can afford a lot of rooms, I guess. How, what do you mean it won't be a good hotel? Do you, heroin doesn't smell. That's true. I mean, I don't know. Actually. I just want to yeah. get it from the concierge, though. I would like heroin. Yeah, Her heroin. Yeah. Wait, I guess it won't be K. I don't know what. what it, it might be K. Say. It probably might be. It could be just like a li with a little bit more of an accent. <laughs> yeah, a difference. Who, different the, who the fuck knows Portuguese? People that speak Portuguese. There's and two countries. Help. That's it. It's harder. From what I've heard. Brazil's a top like six population wise. It's fair. It, Portuguese is like hilariously spoken way too much across the world. <laughs> it has no business being spoken as much as it is. It, it is K in Portuguese. Yeah. yeah. And then all my Spanish friends always just talk shit about Portuguese. I did once. <laughs> this is this is not my words. Some one time, someone in my high school was like, 
I was like, oh, like, I don't know how it came up, but I was like, oh, yeah, in Brazil, they speak Portuguese. And this kid who was uh, natively, like, Spanish, yeah. he was he had Spanish heritage. He's like, oh, you mean gay Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> he called it gay Spanish. I was like, Jesus I, Christ. I've heard dirty Spanish. I've, I haven't heard gay Spanish. <laughs> but like, I think the, the I mean, that's sentiment the, is still the same. Yeah, it's, it's like less than Spanish, basically, is what yeah. they consider it. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me, by the way, that Spain at no point was just like, no, we're taking this. Portugal? Not Brazil, Portugal. <laughs> yeah. Just that little slip of land on the Iberian Peninsula. Yeah, that they, they couldn't just, do it. They couldn't get. All so that touches much. them is Spain. Yeah. It's like, why not just... It's, it's a, Portugal is an absurd country. <laughs> if, I mean, yeah, if you want to get even weirder, it's like, look at Gibraltar. It's like, why do the Brits own that? That makes perfect sense to me. Just colonization? Yeah, they, the Brits owned everything but for a while. But still... Why do they own it? Yeah, that's fine. It's between what? Morocco and uh, Spain? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just Spain. It only borders Spain. It's the Straits of Gibraltar. They only own the, the part on the Iberian Peninsula. Oh, okay. I thought it was like an island between... Uh, no, 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 no. It's the bottom. It's this little tip on Spain. It's like, you know, the Bosphorus Straits? Yeah, yeah sure. It's kind of the same thing at the, at the beginning of the Mediterranean. Okay. Okay. No, okay. I get that. Learn something every episode. Yeah. So... Portuguese Navy had superior ships, weapons. This gave them the upper hand, and they just started crushing the red flag fleet. Right. Anytime they, they came, they interacted or they came across each other, like the Portuguese was, they were fucking them up. Well, so one thing you got to keep in mind with pirate fleets like this is like, oh, they had 400 fucking ships and all this stuff, but what type of ships do they have? Right. They're pretty fucking good ships. Were they giant ships, big ships, but they were slower. Okay. They were, uh, the Portuguese were superior with their weapon, weaponry and the cannons and everything. Okay. But I mean, no, I mean the fucking Navy they had, the pirate ships they had were legit okay. until the Portuguese showed up. Okay. Well, that's the thing with boats. So at that time too, it's like, it's not like a fucking, uh, battle cruiser in modern, like modern times. It's still made out of wood. So if you have better arms, there's a lot you can do. I think it, I think it's a little more complex than that because, like he said, like there is like speed and maneuverability and stuff like that, and to get you out of those tough positions, I guess. Yeah, yeah, to be able to like swing around. Fat, I'm not. But if you can get overwhelmed, I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Now here's a wild, probably a wildly underrated quality that uh, Chang Shi had, and it was self awareness. Okay. Um, she realized they were getting fucked up, and a lot of people in her position would probably be egomaniacs and just kind of go down. With the sinking ships. Yeah, they doubled like, down. They would double down and yeah. they'd be like, no, like, well, we're going to figure this out. Um, she didn't do that. Um, she's like, we shouldn't fuck with the Portuguese. Right. Uh, and the Emperor of China is currently offering an amnesty at the same time to all pirates if they just surrender. What does that mean? So they uh, won't kill so, them as pirates? Yeah, so she readily accepted the amnesty offered by the Chinese emperor. The entire crew of the Red Flag Fleet was forced to surrender. The emperor allowed pirates to take home all the loot they had previously accumulated over the years without facing, without facing any major repercussions. And moreover, uh, several pirates were granted jobs within the Chinese government. Uh, oh, including, no. <laughs> that sounds like a terrible idea. Including Chang Pao, who became... Um, the head of the Chinese Navy. <laughs> well, hire the ones you know, I guess. I guess, right? yeah. Hire it's the like if they're kicking our ass, it. like maybe we should make yeah. them the people to do it. So, I mean, the, Chang, Brit the British made Benedict Arnold a general. Cheng Shi retires. Tight. She gets to go home scot free in 1810. She's done being a pirate. She gets to keep all of her money. Dude, she's not even that old. Not that old. She's 35. 40? No. 1810? 45? She was born in 1775. 75. So, so 35. She, yeah. 30, 19, 35. 1840. She's younger than me. If she was born in 1775 and it's 1840? 1775, 1810. Oh, 1810. Oh, yeah, dude. 35. Pfft, Fuck. Easy. Yeah. She could still be a prostitute. And she's, she's a stunning woman. Yeah. At least from the photo I saw. Uh, she got to retire. Wait, what photo? There's a photo of her. It's 1810. Like there are no photographs obscura? being taken in 1810. <laughs> that's well, not true. It's not true. In 1810? Yes, that's literally true. The first photograph that ever we have the record of is like the, in the 1822, 23. It's in France. Well, and she's alive for that because guess what? She's retired, baby. Okay, that's fine. There's no photographs being taken in 1810. <laughs> uh, in 1826, the daguerreotypes are around. But yeah, there wouldn't be an 1810 one. Yeah. yeah. Guess what? She survives to that point. 
because she retires. She opens up a casino, a brothel, has kids. That's all fine. I'm just saying it's not a photo of her in 1810. But I would there love is to not see. a photo. There's not a photo. They're a painting. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. They're pretty good at making like photorealistic paintings. You don't know how to spell her name. I, Shang Si. He's just getting uh, pictures right. from that Marvel movie. Yeah, that's a photo. That that's looks, a photo. When's that from? The 1840s? Yeah, and she's older. So Yeah, swinging around this way. She for sure looked good. She's a cutie. Yeah. Do, is there work. a painting from, young, from younger times? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, she uh, actually does die in her sleep peacefully at the age of 69. Nice. I, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. What a good she, story. She died like she lived. That's so. a... In Rags the riches from prostitute to pirate queen, gets to retire, is a opens up a, a casino and a brothel. Has she kind actually, of her she has her hooks in the salt industry back then. Spends more time, if I'm not mistaken, spends more time of her life, even though she was famous for these things, as not, not a, a pirate. pirate or prostitute yeah. than as a pirate or prostitute. Correct, because she was out of the game. No, no, I'm sorry, no. 34 years after. So she just. Be, uh, but she wasn't a pirate until she was in her teens. She really. Yeah, yeah. Be, so no, she spent no, more time. After. She wasn't a pirate until she was like 26. Yeah. So she was only a pirate for like nine years. Damn. Fucking crushed it. Look at her. Yeah. She's like the Sandy Koufax of pirates. Thank you. And she, so uh, <laughs> there are representations of her in cinema. Oh, is she in Pirates? She's in Pirates of the Caribbean. Well. Whatever, whatever end of world one is at world's end. That's at the world's third end, one. Third one. She's in that. Oh, but she's an old Chinese lady in that one. Probably. No, she is. Oh, she's well, like. That's not accurate then. Yeah, no, not at all. Because actually, it's not accurate in any way. Because uh, pirates, those movies take place. That's pre-revolutionary war, and she was born the year before the Declaration of Independence was signed. So they got pretty creatively. Pretty liberal with that. Liberal. There's one thing we hate. You mean the book, movie with liberals. the Kraken in it got a little liberal <laughs> with, with the uh, facts, historical facts? Yeah, yeah. Got a little fast and loose with it. Oh, well, we no. get a little fast and loose with the facts here as well. But I mean, you mean the movie not, based not off of a bad. ride at Disney World? Right. Yeah. Okay. I think that's fine. Uh, what'd you guys learn today? I learned that with enough business acumen and a good game plan, you can accomplish anything. And I think we need to hire more prostitutes for higher up positions. Like former prostitutes. Why not current ones? They should run the government. Well, they become former once they... Well, yeah. Yeah. Once you hire a prostitute to do something other than be a prostitute, they become a former prostitute. No. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Maybe some people just yeah. have a love for the love game. Love the game. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. They're so, entrepreneurs. Because it becomes a side have, hustle. They have multiple gigs. Yeah. Sometimes... I, there's Different some days I want to drive for Domino's. Dude, there's a lot of days I wouldn't mind driving like just a truck. Yeah, just driving a truck. Can you I get be a the guy that, tomorrow? Can I control yeah. the 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 robot that delivers the pizzas for Domino's? Dude, have you seen those guys downtown? Yeah. As you ride a bike behind them or whatever, they're it's a tech. A, company. It's a little like it's Domino's a li- isn't a pizza company. People don't know that. Tech company. Tech company, huh? That serves pizza. Like uh, Chubby's is a marketing company. That, that has is shorts. why. I mean, look at their fucking stock. Their stock is insane. Because their pizza got better. No, well, not no. It's because I think it's of the technology. No, I think the... They're selling all of their, like, uh, their trackers. Oh, yeah. I can see that because the Domino's tracker is legit. It's like, great. I love that thing. Yeah. You get the little parrot one, the island theme, it squawks at you. Yeah. I love Rob, that. Rob, what'd you learn today? Um, learned that the uh, Portuguese really just fucked up a woman's dreams. I think they um, enhanced, I think they expedited those dreams. She got to retire. She got to retire. Maybe that's her true. son became the head of the Navy. You know what, for I, China. Learned, what I learned today? Uh, I, I don't want to get like overly preachy about anything. Her husband's but son. I swear to God, minus the uh, uh, raping a boy part. Um, man, if this woman was doing her business in the Caribbean and not the South China Sea, she'd be a legend. Yeah, no way. We she would, we'd, she we'd would know her name. She would. Like, she would probably have a. Like, there'd be a part of the Gulf that was hers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Black, I mean, like Blackbeard's, everybody knows. Everybody knows about fucking. Nobody's talking about Blackbeard if she's in the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. Well, she, her name probably like Molly something, and we'd all know. Yeah, let's talk about it. Also, what a much tougher waterway to be a pirate on than the Caribbean. Is it Caribbean? Is it? It's chill, dude. I don't know. We're talking about it, like. Atlantic Gulf waters and stuff versus fucking Pacific waters. Well, South China Sea is insulated. That is true because Japan, but yeah, I don't think 
I don't know that either. I, I couldn't. I have. I have no way to know which one is worse. Well, Tika is someone that I went to the Gulf sometimes. <laughs> Chill waters, not high waves. You go to the Atlantic side, you're you like, were, whoa, you the fuck up, you inlander. Yeah, that's right. If you do it on a lake, oh yeah. uh, man, there should be some lake pirates. I'm gonna look up those one day. Uh, there now, might have been some pirates on the Great Lakes. Uh, t- like those honestly. are just bandits, though. Those are Vikings. On the Great Lakes, sure. Oh, yeah. I know, but I really like this. Uh, we we do not uh, uh, value pirates from other cultures enough. It's no. all it's all about the pirates of the Caribbean, basically, and a little bit of the Atlantic. And this woman had a much bigger empire than all. Of them. Oh yeah, I mean she. 100%. She honestly, she outdoes even the only other famous pirates that we talk about. And the only reason we talk about is because we fought them. Mm-hmm. Were the Barbary Coast pirates. Also, um, who's homeboy that fought the Battle of New Orleans? Andrew Jackson. No, Jean Latif or whatever. Oh, Jean Lafitte? Yeah. Yeah. The oldest bar in the, world, the country's name. Lafitte. Yeah. He's like the only pirate that I remember. Okay. I mean, I, I don't even know his name. And he wasn't even like that big of a pirate. The Chinese are even more efficient at being pirates than us. Mm, it's all right. Yeah. Uh, who is today's Hitler? Is it Portugal? Yeah, it's Portugal. Portugal for sure. Portugal. Historically, always Portugal. Yeah. Really. Portugal is the Hitler for several reasons. For one, it's making so many spe- people speak Portuguese. Like, Portugal, if Portugal was in any other part of the world, but still Portugal, they would be Albania. I don't, that's too many moves for me. What logically. I'm just saying is if they weren't on the ocean, right? If they didn't oh, maybe nothing, yeah. If they didn't have an outward facing area, exact same culture and everything else. Like, what are they? Swap out Albania with Portugal. Just move all those people and all those people. I feel like Portuguese people would not have a fun time where Albania is. No, but Albanians would have a blast where Portugal is. Mm. It's kind of, I feel like it's similar vibe to Croatia. What, Albania? Cro- Portugal? Portugal. Portugal. But yeah, but being on the water. Right. But Croatia wasn't on a good part of the world. I mean, that's... And also, Croatia's only been a country for, like, 40 years. I get what you're getting at. I yeah. just feel like, oh, if you switch these people and this people, they'd be the same. It's like, yeah, but that's because of where they are. Yeah, check it out. They are the way they are because it's of where, where they were. From. Yeah. I'm just saying there's nothing special about them. I, I'm going to ride for the Portuguese. I don't, they're not the Hitler. I think the wave that took out her husband is the... The Hitler. Hitler of the episode. What, here, here's an idea. What if the uh, married couple that uh, murdered a family and then raped their child for several years well, husband, was the Hitler? The, her husband, son, yeah. child. She I mean, might have been the Hitler of this episode, to be uh, honest. I was going to say, in a weird way, she kind of is, because what did she do? That, what Rob just said, <laughs> instilled so much fucking bureaucracy. God, yeah. like, just, like, hey, so much rule tape. number one, if you don't listen to me, you're getting your head cut off. Right. Like, that's, that's pretty that's autocratic. Rule. That's a good rule one, though. I mean, it's a way to get people to listen. You got to follow through on that rule. If you don't follow through on that rule, no one's listening to you. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you got that. But, like, some of her rules were pretty good, too. Like, hey, don't rape people, assholes. Well, that's don't rape them into prostitution, yeah, right? Product. Don't rape the sex slaves. <laughs> yeah. That's just, again, that's don't bruise the banana. We got to put it on the shelf. That's, <laughs> God, dude, that's, that's a pretty good one. Uh, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, it's don't, don't I mean, rough up the merch. She, yeah. made, she made all the right moves, you know, getting all the admirals on her side, like, of, of each individual fleet, like, having good relationships with them. Having somebody close to the vest at all times. I would all. You could almost say that the, the East India Company might be the Hitler here because they destabilized China enough the, that this could even flourish. Let's not get too in the weeds. It's the British, yeah. Br- the British are the. Let's the blame Hitler the white guys. Come yeah, on, guys. Right, fine. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm sticking with the Portuguese then. If we're blaming white guys, yeah. So. What's funny is people might have just had a light bulb moment when you said that. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, Spanish people are white. Yeah. <laughs> like they're Spanish, from Portuguese. right next to France. From like, Europe. Although I would like to dump a lot of like most of the horrors of colonialism off on brown people, I guess. Right. Just get that off my white conscience. I'm sure that'd be nice for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, really I hope you don't live under like just a constant. Haunts like me every day. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure colonialism really haunts like, oh, you. Oh God, what the Spanish did. Yeah. For those who don't know, uh, Rob actually grew up in South Africa. Yeah. So, um, uh, me and Elon Musk were good friends. His words make sense now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a lot of emeralds. I do. No. I shouldn't have showed you my emerald room. <laughs> it was a mistake letting a Jew in there, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I was like, oh my God. Well, to be fair, I could tell you could smell it. <laughs> so go ahead and make sure to leave a review. <laughs> 
<laughs> iTunes, uh, rate five stars on Spotify as well. Please and thank you. Um, every review helps us move up the charts. And uh, yeah, tell a friend about the podcast. That's the best way to help us grow is to just, you know, word of mouth. That that does more than anything else. And uh, oh, get five of your friends to follow our Instagram account. <laughs> yeah, please. We're almost at 2K on Instagram. <laughs> so uh, let's let's get that going. Softcore history on Instagram. Softcorehistory.com for some merch. We've got some new shirts. Dope merch. Hurry up and get this shit before St. Paddy's Day. Yeah, uh, those uh, Mike Malloy shirts. Mike Malloy shirts. Too Irish to die. Just buy those anyway. They're not going to ship in time. I know that. Um, when is when it? The 17th? They might. They might ship in time, but probably not. Don't don't bank on it. Don't bank on it at this uh, point. But yeah. we do have plenty of good merch. we got some crew neck uh, sweaters. Uh, get, you know, for you're in a, a climate that is still cold. Obviously, get those. Uh, has softcore history on the front. We'll have that in a t-shirt variety as well if it's warmer. Um, a lot of good stuff. Softcorehistory.com. Um, but yeah, uh, follow us on Instagram. Leave a review. And uh, anything else, guys? I think I'm good. Yeah, that's it for me, man. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, until next week. Uh, that, that's Jake Goldman. That's Rob Fox. I'm Dan Register. And you just got soft served. <laughs>